<laughs> All right, it's six o'clock. I'll call the September 10th, 2024 meeting of the With County Board of Supervisors to order. This evening we have Pastor Andrew Davies from the Fellowship Baptist Church to provide the invocation. If you would please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Father, we've come together again to do the business of this county, which really is your business. And Lord, uh, may we be ever clear that all of us, not just these supervisors, all of us need your wisdom. Without you, we can do nothing. And Father, I come to you asking you to grant these board members your wisdom. I pray that you guide them and direct them, and may they do that with the best. Lord, uh, we're in election season. May you bring out the worst in people. And we absolutely have a responsibility to prayerfully consider who the best candidates are and put them, give them our vote. But as we do so, Lord, may we understand that our hope does not lie in men or women. Our hope lies in you. And we desperately need your touch upon this nation. Tomorrow we have a sad reminder of what happened. Lord, how desperately we need to look to you. So may everything in this meeting tonight bring honor to you. And in doing that, we'll do what's best for our family. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> All right, before we move on <coughs> with our agenda, we do have a presentation tonight um, for a, a retiree of the county. And I've seen him somewhere. Oh, he's hiding in the back. <laughs> if uh, Mr. Rick Stoneman, and you can bring your much better half with you, Rick. <laughs> But Rick, if, and and as Rick's coming up, Rick was not only a dedicated county employee for many years, and Mr. Crisp and Mr. Um, Bear can touch on that. But you know, Rick's been a friend to many in With County, and to many in With County, Rick was the face of With County, and he always done that very professionally. Like I said, he was always very dedicated out all hours of the night, the weekends, and he's been promoted to full-time grandfather. And um, so, Rick, thank you for your service from the board, and more importantly, thank you for being what I consider a friend. Thank you, Aubrey. Thank you, Aubrey. Um, all right. My life has been about All right. I don't like to say. Mr. Barry, I'm sorry I didn't No, you're right. Absolutely. Anyone else want to say anything before? Well, I I want to thank Rick, first of all. Uh, Mr. Stoneman came here in 2000. He actually came here just a little bit before I did. Uh, he held up better than I did. He looks better than I did as well. But uh, what was the first time I really got to work closely with Rick was spent a lot of time <coughs> on the Trick Lake campground learning a whole lot of water lines and where they were and, and digging ditches and I think Rick actually was more surprised I could actually operate the show. He told me that I it better in the process. But as Mr. Ball said, Rick Rick was the face with that Rick was the face of the water department to a whole lot of people. And you, you saw Rick riding around in his truck all throughout the county, never on the cell phone finding the next place to go to in the process or anything. But Rick worked great with the citizens. Rick worked great with the people that had complaints. He went out and explained what was happening. Uh, he he has been a tremendous, a tremendous employee to us over the years. So I thank you for your years of service, and uh, I hate to see you retire, but I am glad to see you retire. So. Thank you very much for having me. Well, I think I mean, they said it all, but Rick and I, we've been through the ringer together in 24, 30 years, but. Uh, We've had some good times, we've had some hard times, but uh, like I said, he's been based in the water department for a long time. And, uh, we're kind of workers, but we're good friends. Always had a bad time. We're going to miss him. So, Rick, 
So we're going to do two things. Here. First, we're going to do a presentation of the plaque presented to Rick Stoneman in appreciation of 24 years of service, 2000-2024, the West County Water Department. First. And our policy says that you get a watch. Now, personally, I think a belt buckle might have been a better thing in the process. Be a <laughs> But we also present you with a watch. And Rick, we hope you have a wonderful time. Have a long time in your life. Have a long time your grandchildren. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you. Rick, since you didn't make the, the last meeting, I was going to make you go last, but you brought your wife, and I wouldn't do that to you. All right. First item on our agenda is citizens time. We didn't have any citizens signed up, so I'll close citizens time. Next item on the agenda, we have a couple of public hearings. The first one is the solid waste ordinance amendment number two. I'll read the notice of the public hearing for the record. In compliance with the Code of Virginia of 1950 and amendments thereto, the With County Board of Supervisors will conduct a public hearing to consider amendment number two to ordinance 99-2 entitled Solid Waste Ordinance of With County, Virginia. The Board of Supervisors shall hear comments from citizens concerning the proposed amendment. The public hearing shall be held Tuesday, September the 10th, 2024 at 6 p.m. in the boardroom of the Wythe County Office Building, 340 South 6th Street, Withfield, Virginia. A copy of the proposed amendment may be found online at www.withco.org or at the County Administrator's Office, 340 <coughs> South 6th Street, Withfield, Virginia, for public review. And Mr. Bayer, we did not have anybody sign up for citizen's comment. I know we did receive one written comment um, that I assume will be entered into the record. Do you have anything to add on the um, proposed amendment? Uh, nothing for the public hearing time, Mr. Chairman. All right. Does anybody else have anything to add to the public hearing? All right. With that being said, I will close the public hearing for Solid Waste Ordinance Amendment Number Two. Move on. We have, and Mr. Bear, I'll let you read the next public hearing. The With County Board of Supervisors will hold a public hearing to give citizens served by With County Public Water System an opportunity to comment on a proposed rate change in accordance with the Code of Virginia, Section 15.2-2119, and subsequent revisions, the With County Board of Supervisors proposes the change of rates charged for the water services as follows. Um, I will not read all the rates, if that is okay, Mr. Chairman. I will indicate that this is a 5% increase on the base rate. Uh, which means the base rate for all users goes from 2079 to 2183. All of the other uh, meter sizes uh, listed through there have an equivalent rate increase based on their multiplier at that 5% rate uh, increase to 2183. The volume rate um, changes residential from $10.40 per thousand gallons to $10.92 per thousand gallons. The commercial volume rate changes from $11.40 per thousand gallons to $11.97 per thousand gallons. The public hearing is scheduled for September 10th, 2024 at 6 p.m. or soon there as practical thereafter in the boardroom of the County Administration Building, 340 South 6th Street, Whitfield, Virginia, 24382 to hear public comment on the proposed water rate change. All right, and again, I did not receive anybody signed up to speak on the public hearing for the proposed water rate increase. Is there anything anybody wants to add to the public hearing portion? All right. That being said, I will close the public hearing, move on with the agenda to the payment of invoices. Each board member has received in their board package a copy of the invoices that need to be paid. And with that, I'll open the floor up for a motion to pay the invoices. So moved. Who made the motion? Have a motion by Mr. Terry to have a second. Second. 
have a second by Mr. Burnett. Is there any questions, <coughs> discussion, or any invoice any board member wants to pull out? All right. Here now we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett. Uh, aye. 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 So approved. Next item on our agenda is the minutes from our previous meeting from August the 27th, 2024. Entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Burnett. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Ms. Lawson. Is there any questions or additions or corrections on the minutes as presented? All right, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are approved. Next item on our agenda is old business. Mr. Bear, do you have anything under old business? I uh, do not have anything under old business, Mr. Chairman, but I uh, would like to ask when you all would like to consider taking action on the two public hearing items that we just had. Well, we, you want to do it under old business or new business? We could, we could do it under new business if you want to do it then. All right, we'll move on to new business. We have a petition to vacate a right away. Mr. Bear, I'm not sure. If yeah, Ms. Uh, Shelton has received this request uh, to vacate. The map is on page 56 uh, of your uh, agenda. This is on the left side of Max Meadows Road heading into Max Meadows uh, west side. Um, just before you get to the uh, Acre and Hope Church uh, right there. Uh, on the left, it, it's uh, the, the dark shaded sections right there. Uh, all the uh, owners of those properties have signed off on this vacation request. Uh, I would request that the Board of Supervisors uh, set a public hearing, uh, giving time to advertise. Let's set it for October 8th and ask the county attorney to... Uh, prepared ordinance for the consideration of the vacation of that. All right. I'll entertain a motion to set a public hearing for October the 8th, 2024. So moved. Second. Have a motion by Mr. Smith. I have a second by Mr. Cook. Is there any questions or discussion on that motion? All right. Hearing then we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry. Aye. 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 So approved. <coughs> Next item under new business is Arena Paving Award. Mr. Hankins, is that you? It is. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, we did receive um, Arena uh, Paving bids uh, last week uh, in this room. Uh, Thompson and Litton uh, conducted the, the bid for us. Um, we received four uh, bids, uh, so it was an active uh, bidding session. Um, the um, all of the bids came in under the engineer's estimate uh, for the project. The low bid came in at $867,440 from Sowers Construction Company in Mount Airy. Uh, Thompson and Litton has prepared a letter for you uh, recommending that uh, you uh, accept the bid and proceed with the project. Uh, staff would ask for your authorization to enter into an agreement with uh, Sowers Construction and give them notice to proceed in an effort to try to get things paved in time for the uh, upcoming hockey season. All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the paving bid as so, presented. So moved. Have a motion by Ms. Lawson. Do I have a second? Have a second by Mr. Morgan. Is there any questions or discussion on the motion? Uh, Mr. Hankins, I assume that's the striping and it's, it's the striping, the circulation, the, the main paving areas. It's redoing the paving area that's there in front of the box office now because that, that pavement is uh, in pretty poor uh, condition. Uh, it will decrease the number of handicapped parking spots on that side of the building. It will add additional parking spots on the other side of the building to make both stands uh, easily handicapped accessible. Um, it gets paved drive aisles all the way around the building so that they can do deliveries and get buses in and out of there uh, more easily and does all the striping and circulation. And what, and what do we have budgeted for that? Uh, about 1.8. That's what I um, All right. I'm sorry. No, no, sorry about that, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
Mr. Hankins, uh -huh. that doesn't include going down to the overflow parking, right? It's just up top. It range. does not. It is just the okay. top parking area. All told, it gets us around, I believe it's 329, 330 parking spots, some, somewhere in that area. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? All right, here now we'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Burnett. Aye. 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 So approved. The next item, Mr. Hankins has. <coughs> presented us a letter <coughs> of support for citizen broadband access. Mr. Baird, do you want to highlight, I mean, excuse me, Mr. Hankins, <laughs> do you want to highlight that memo? Yes, sir. Uh, there are some federal funds available for uh, telecommunications providers to be able to uh, make some of their services more affordable. As we get broadband services spread throughout the county, uh, it, it, there are some, still some citizens that won't be able to afford service. So. Um, Citizens is uh, making an attempt to get some of those federal funds uh, to, to make uh, broadband services more accessible. Um, there's no guarantee that they'll get them, but they did ask for a letter of support from the locality, and I prepared the attached letter and would ask for your authorization to send it um, on citizens' behalf. Do we need to take action, or can we just do that by consensus of the board? Consensus. I mean, it's not an action of the board. It's just, does anybody have a problem with Mr. Hankins' letter? I'm sure, I'm sure these citizens and citizens <laughs> will appreciate it. So, thank you, Mr. Hankins. Next, we have my favorite personal property tax relief resolution. Mr. Baird, do you yes. have a be glad to, Mr. Chairman. You should have in front of you a copy of the PPTRA resolution. Uh, this is a resolution that uh, the board adopts every year. The state has, gosh, many years ago. I don't remember now how many years ago it was. 1998. Huh? 1998. Yeah, I can't remember when they when they flatlined it after that, like 2004 or something like that. It's it didn't 20, take many years. Yes, yeah, 20 years though. So. Anyway, we receive $1,500,814 from the state every year in personal property tax relief. Every year we have to take that amount, run a calculation on it with our current assessed values and come up with what amount of PPTRA relief will go to all of the citizens. So uh, what that resolution does, everything that is value or assessed at under $1,000 or less, they get 100% personal property tax relief on it. Anything between $1,000 and $1 and uh, $20,000 will receive 24.98% tax relief. And for any vehicle assessed greater than $20,000, they will receive 24.98% tax relief on the first $20,000 of their vehicle. Um, two years ago, it was about 27%. Last year, it was about 29%, but we know there was some vehicles and everything missing on it last year. This year is at 24.98%. I would request the board adopt uh, this uh, resolution. All right. I will entertain a motion to adopt resolution 2024-25. So have second. a motion by Mr. Smith, a second by Mr. Terry. Is there any questions or discussion on that one? I'd be remiss if I don't give my annual comment that I can't believe a governor hasn't run on going away with the car tax because it worked for one of them and we're still paying it. <laughs> we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry? Aye. 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 So approved. Now, we'll go back to our earlier <coughs> public hearings. Um, we have the first, we have solid waste ordinance amendment number two. I'll open the floor up for any motions. Mr. Chairman, oh. if, if I might, um, I handed out in front of you all uh, the, a paper copy of that amendment. Oh, um, I'm sorry, ordinance, okay. I think that, that's one you're on, correct? Yeah. Um, the... The only change on it from, from what you had, uh, the very bottom of the first page under section 6.12C, um, there's a sentence there that said, should the transfer station have an involuntary shutdown, the licensee shall be exempt from requirement to dispose of trash at the transfer station during the duration of the shutdown. 
Um, this change is just in case we have an incident like we did last week where we were shut down Friday afternoon and Monday um, that the haulers have an opportunity to haul trash elsewhere in the process. Uh, that makes uh, this amendment less restrictive, doesn't add any additional restrictions to it. Um, I would recommend the board adopt amendment number two to this ordinance. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adopt amendment number two to ordinance 99-02. So have a motion by Mr. Cook. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Ms. Lawson. Is there any questions or discussion on the amendment? All right. Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett? Aye. 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 So approved. <coughs> and the next item was the proposed water rate increases. I don't believe there was a <clears throat> yeah, there wasn't an ordinance number on that. No, it's not an ordinance number. Page 7 of the agenda um, just has the memo for me recommending um, the adoption of the rates as advertised. I'll, well, before we take our floor, open the floor, does anybody have any comments on it? I just have one question, just as clarification on this, Mr. Byer. Yes. Um, I don't think I know the answer, but the commercial does not include progress points. Correct? That is correct. All right. Does anybody else have any questions or discussion? All right. With that being said, I will entertain a motion to approve the proposed water rate changes. So moved. Have a motion by Ms. Lawson. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Cook. Is there any more questions or discussion on that motion? Y'all are making me be the bad guy tonight. <laughs> so y'all are making me be the bad guy. All right. With that being said, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry? No. Aye. 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 No. So approved. Anything else under new business, Mr. Barry? No, sir, Mr. Chairman. I do not have anything else. Mr. Hankins, do you have anything? Not for new business, no, sir. Mr. Farley? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I do. Um, the registrar had uh, requested that we, with the relocation of his office uh, a couple years ago, we had requested an order from the judge that there would be no political signs on the courthouse complex property. And he has requested that we extend that order to the property where his office will now be located. Uh, so my request to you all is, with your permission, I would like to ask the judge to extend that order to the property where the registrar's office is going to be located to, so that they don't place any political signs on that property. I mean, is that, is that something that we as a board could do? I mean... I understand the thought. I, I think we can do it with their property, right? Like we control yeah. the property is the with county, and I believe we could set that as you know you can't put signs out there without the judge's order and see how that goes. And if we want the force of the order behind it, Mr. Counts had indicated that other registrars, I guess his colleagues, have sought the order from the court, the court. and that was done by a request by the board of supervisors to do so. Uh, so we're just following this local tradition or the tradition among registrars, but technically you own the property and as it is public property, but you would, can, I'd have to look into that a little bit, but I think you can control what goes on your property um, as far as those signs go. And, it, and it's not a regular voting precinct. He's just concerned about the time period for early voting. The early, early voting, I think. It's not a voting precinct except for early voting. I think I can go in there and early vote whenever that time starts, yeah. and I think that's what he's trying to avoid is uh, signs in, during that process. I, I mean, I, I guess if that's the way other localities done it, we can ask the judge yeah. and see what the you know, judge says. See if he's willing to do it or not. Yeah. We, we, you all requested this 2020, 21, 2021, 2021, yeah. Lennon brought it up to us. My recommendation would be request you all to go ahead and, and authorize the judge to establish your order for this, but then have Mr. Farthing go ahead and look at adopting a, a drafting an ordinance, because we can do it by ordinance. 
but doing it by ordinance is going to require public hearings and everything else, and the early voting will be halfway through by the time that gets And we completed. have to do it every year. It's not, so, we have to renew that ordinance every year. Oh, it doesn't be renewed every year. I would just ask the judge to. Because we get the order, it's just in yeah. place. It's, I think that's why we chose that the first time. Yeah. I mean, that's my opinion. What do y'all think? Yeah. That's that's yeah. 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 But that doesn't include the other voting precincts, right? It's just for this. It, it's just for this one. And there are rules. The voting precincts have rules about how far they have to be from the door, I think. Uh, but it's only this. I, I think the size. major concern last time was the the contractors. I mean, if somebody comes up and puts 30 Jamie Smith signs out there, the, the mowing contractors <laughs> going to gonna have to move them and mow, you know. Right. So, yeah. And plus, there's not a whole lot of grass over there to start with. So. <laughs> Yeah. That does bring up the question, Mr. Farley, should that also include the 6th Street parking lot across the street? There's a lot of grass area there that somebody could put signs in directly across from the registrar's we office just, as well. We I just, think we just worded the county complex and list all the address structures, including that garage and the 440 West Franklin Street. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Okay. And I think I'd recommend, Mr. Chairman, someone make a motion to request that. Request that order. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll entertain a motion that we request that um, order from the judge. So I have a motion by Mr. Cook. I have a second. I have a second by Mr. Morgan. Is there any more questions or discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So approved. All right, anything else for new business? All right, we'll move into board reports. Mr. Terry, I'll start with you. Nothing at this time, sir. All right, Mr. Morgan. I got a couple of questions. Uh, has VDOT said anything about uh, that bridge it washed out over next to Powder Mill Road? And at one time they were talking about they were going to replace uh, it. The Silings Road Bridge? Yeah. Um, Last I heard, they were going to start replacement of it, but I do not have a time frame. I'll be glad to follow up and see if they got a time frame on it. Okay. Uh, the other thing, I had a, a, a citizen was asking me about the broadband. Is it now fixed so that everybody can hook onto it? No, sir. Um, Point Broadband has finished all but about 11 cabinets, so um, most of the east end of the county has not been done. Uh, they are saying that they will be done by next summer, but they, they've got about 11 cabinets left to construct. Um, that, that meets the timeline that, that they have from the grant funding uh, for this project. Um, that they've got about two-thirds of, of the county done, so um, in order for folks to, to check and see, they can go on Point Broadband's website type in their address on the availability tool and see if it's available in front of their, their home. Um, if it is, it's an easy sign up process, um, but everybody should have access to it by uh, next summer. They just, you know, the, the Eastern end doesn't yet because they started working the West and have, have been working East. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. All right, Mr. Smith. I got a few things, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Byer, have we heard any updates uh, with the Fort Chisel Library and the with Grayson Regional Library? I guess at the last meeting that I met, Mr. Morgan had recently attended a meeting with the, the Fort Chisel Library. <clears throat> um, might be best if Mr. Morgan rehashes that meeting, but basically there's still some work to be done and their best case scenario they thought may be the first of the year in order to be up and operational. Yeah, there's some interior work that has to be done. Okay. Um, and then, Mr. Byer, I was uh, contacted by some residents on Meadowview Lane, um, Raw for Grouse Ridge. Um, they were asking questions about the revenue sharing that was going on. Um, I'd like to get with you to get a little more information on that because that was that was broken up, from what I understand, uh, from talking to the president of the. The road maintenance agreement or whatever uh it was meta view one which is meta view lane now meta view two is now grouse ridge and apparently there's a meta view three that connects the two in the back um their question is how far does it go um, through 
command of view, and then um, when when he was asking the question, he was talking about um, the dollar amount that they would pay, and then I tried to explain it. They could all agree to pay the same amount, or the person that lives in the back would pay more than the person that lives in the front. Um, so Correct. they're, you know, they, they got a lot of questions that they were. And we, we have an informational meeting set up with them September 19th, so it may just be staff since we have a, a joint school board meeting scheduled at the same time. But uh, we, we would go over those figures with them and, and give them their options. Okay. Really, it's up to the members of the community to decide how that gets divvied up, You know, whether it's an equal share or the ones at the back pay a, a larger share. Yeah, and, I, and, and I communicated that to them as well, and also that the majority of the landowners that had stake in it would be the ones that would uh, control whether it was there or not. That's absolutely correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's, right. the, so, they, they create what they want to be that mm -hmm. district and they create that rate. And then um, they can, you know, I, I'll just make it simple. Those that are going to be along the state maintained road may be paying X, and those that are further up that don't have a state maintained road in front of them may be paying 50% of X on the tax rate. And then they decide. You know who all up through there creates that district they just have to have at least 50 percent of landowners who own at least 50 percent of the land mass sign that petition in order it for to come to you all for consideration so we'll we'll go over those options with them lisa will have a map showing the how far the road is. i don't remember it but she'll have a map of how far vdot says they can take that road back to yeah if y'all would um, include me on that meeting i'd like to attend that meeting it, uh, it's going to be the same night of our school board meeting yeah. oh right. Right. And you've got obligations. Oh, yeah, i got to wire this. <laughs> whatever it is. All right. Look at this. But we'll share the information with you of, of what we've got on the distance and all. Okay, and I'll let him know. I'll contact him back and let him know. Uh, Ivanhoe Road, uh, next to Steve Johnson's residence. I said it was a half a mile. It's about a quarter of a mile from the intersection of Fort Chisel Road. Um, it's still coming apart there in the curve in the middle. So if we can get beat out on that. Um, Ramsey Mountain, thank Mr. Swartz for his quick response on that. Okay. I did pass that along to the residents up there, so they're good with that. Uh, I was also contacted by a gentleman that lives down on Red Hollow Road. Uh, his property adjoins the Animal Park. Uh, he's got concerns that there's a lot of people coming up into his driveway, riding around his shops, uh, thinking that they're at the Animal Park, and they're actually coming up his road. It's got private drive on it. Can we reach out to the animal park and see if they can update their signs or get some signage that's visible to show where their entrance is actually in? That, is that coming from like Fort Chisel High School way from 52? Okay. That's all I've got, Mr. Turner. All right. Mr. Cook, the only thing I have is I'd like to <clears throat> thank the firefighters and the veterans and military and everybody for 9-11 and let them know that we haven't forgotten. All right, Mrs. Lawson. I have nothing at this time. All right, Mr. Burnett. Only thing I have is at the corner of US 52 and Castleton Road, the uh, guardrail has been run over again. We could let VDOT know. And that's all I have to turn. All right. Um, got a couple of things uh, we I did receive some positive comments um, from different people about our, our EMS staff um, and, and what a professional job and, and quick response they provided so Mr. Hankins if, if you'll pass that along and kind of what Mr. Cook said looking at some of our paramedics and firefighters that we've hired it's hard to believe it a lot of them weren't alive when September 11th happened, and I guess that's aging everybody in this room. Um, it's hard to believe it's 23 years ago, and Pastor Davies, I hate that he left because he done a really good job uh, with his invocation. Um, and the last thing I had is I just wanted to say thank you to Children's Truck and, and um, JPSA Billy and his staff. We did have an in, unfortunate incident where some medical waste um, was improperly disposed of, and we had to shut our transfer station down. Um, Billy and his staff 
dealt with it. Um, it was a, a unique situation, and luckily it's one that doesn't happen very often. Um, so I think we're better prepared, or the JPSA is better prepared in the future, um, should it ever happen again. But, you know, Children's um, Environmental Services, I believe is their actual company name, you know, I think they went above and beyond. They went around to the trash centers, you know, and, and used their boom truck to, to compound the trash so we wouldn't have to close centers down. And as far as I know, the only one we had to close down was 2152. Yeah, 52 North, that's correct. 52 North, rather. So um, for a weekend, um, that's impressive, number one. And Number two, that tells me that they're taking this job to heart because they're making sure these centers stay serviced and, and stays empty so our citizens aren't, aren't inconvenient. So um, if you'll reach out to them, Mr. Barron, and, and give them um, kudos for, for that. Be glad to. All right. Does anybody else have anything to come before the board, Mr. Barron? I do not have anything else. Mr. Alfred. Hankins. Alpha. Oh, yes. Um, uh, Mr. Hankins does, at, last week came across, there is a uh, potential um, industrial prospect if we could go into closed session for 2.23711A5 for Project Alpha, briefly. Okay. All right, entertain a motion to go into closed session under 2.2-3711A5. A5 Prospective Industry Project Alpha. So moved. Second. Have a motion by Mr. Terry, a second by Mr. Burnett. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We're now in closed session. We're now back in open session on the record. Mr. Terry, if you'll read the certification. Whereas the Worth County Board of Supervisors has convened a closed meeting on this date pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote and in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Whereas Section 2.2-3712 of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by the Worth County Board of Supervisors that such a meeting was conducted in conformity with the Virginia law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Worth County Board of Supervisors hereby certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge, only public business matters are lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting to which the certification resolution applies, and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convened in this closed meeting were heard, discussed, and are considered by the Worth County Board of Supervisors. And I'll make that a motion, Mr. Chairman. All right. I have a motion by Mr. Terry to have a second. second. have a second by Mr. Morgan. <laughs> we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett? Aye. 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 So approved. All right. Anything else to come before the board, Mr. Baird? No, sir. Mr. Hankins? No, sir. Mr. Farley? No, sir. Ms. Collins? Mm. All right. I'll entertain a motion to recess until September the 19th, 2024 at 5 p.m. for a joint meeting with the school board. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Terry to have a second. Second. Have a second by Mr. Cook. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We're now in recess. <laughs>